Welcome to my channel. I'm going to show you step by step how to value a stock. We will enter the company's financial information and capital structure into my Excel model. Then we determine whether the stock is a buy or a sell. At the end we analyze and calculate the financial ratios. I am doing this with you throughout the entire video so it's like we're doing it together. Leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. The company we're going to look at today is Kellogg. Kellogg produces cereal and convenience foods. Some of its brands are Corn Flakes, Frosted Flakes, Pringles, Eggo, and Cheez-Its. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $23.6 billion. So that's the value of the company according to the stock market. And they're trading at $68.85, so that's one share of stock. And the way you value a company is you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that number back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. Now I'm going to pull their actual free cash flows. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Let's pull the net income, that's the profit and loss on the income statement. And we'll put that into the model. We also need the revenue which are the sales for each year. And it's pretty consistent around 13 billion every year. So it looks like their free cash flow, net income, and sales are pretty consistent and positive. So we should get a good value for the company. Let's look at a capital structure. The interest they pay in their debt is $284 million. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to the liability section. Current debt of $700 million. Long-term debt of $7.2 billion. They pay 3.5% interest on their debt. Interest payments are tax deductible, so let's go back to the income statement. $1.3 billion of income before tax and $321 million of taxes. So the effective tax rate is 25%. The cost of debt is the interest rate times 1 minus the effective tax rate, which is 2.7%. Let's pull the beta, because that's how you calculate the cost of equity use the capital asset pricing model. The beta is 0.58, so it's a pretty safe stock to invest in. It doesn't move too much. Let's go back to the balance sheet, get their current assets. We need the current assets to calculate the current ratio later, and that's 3.4 billion. Let's see what that's made up of. 397 million of cash, 1.3 billion in net receivables, 1.2 billion of inventory, and 232 million of other. We also need the current liabilities to calculate the current ratio. That's 4.8 billion. Let's see what that is. Current debt, 700 million, 2.4 billion of accounts payable, 42 million of taxes payable, 931 million of accrued liabilities, and 577 million of other. Stockholders' equity is the value of the company according to the balance sheet. That's 2.7 billion. Stockholders' equity equals assets minus liabilities. That's 105 million of common stock, 7.9 billion of retained earnings, and negative 1.5 billion of accumulated other comprehensive income. Now to calculate the interest coverage ratio, we need the operating income. That's 1.4 billion. Let's look at a capital structure. 74% debt, cost of debt is 2.7%. 26% equity, cost of equity is 6.8%, and the WAC is 3.75% which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows, that's here in blue. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital, and we get a value of the company at $24 billion. We divide that by 343 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $70. It's trading at $69, so it's trading at intrinsic value. Let's see what simply Wall Street says. They're at $70, so they're also at the same number I'm at. Let's see where the stock has been trading at. It looks like it hit the low 80s about three, four years ago, but it's in a pretty tight range. That's why it has a low beta. So it's pretty easy to value companies like this because companies with stable, consistent numbers are the type of companies that work well with DCF models. Let's look at the financial ratios. They don't have a good PE. They have a good price sales and a bad price to book. PE is stock price of earnings per share. Earnings per share is calculated by taking net income divided by shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, they're at 24 and a half. 
This means investors are paying about $25 for $1 of net income. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue or shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.7. So investors are paying $1.70 for $1 revenue. So that's a really good ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 8.6. So investors are paying about $8.50 for $1 of book value. Bad current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and really good ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they cannot cover their current debts and payables, so they may need to take on more debt. This could be a timing thing, and possibly next quarter this ratio will get fixed. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, there are 35%, so they provide a really good value to the equity holders. Now, if you invest in the stock, you are an equity holder. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. Not much risk of default anytime soon. A good way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. The only other company I did in this industry was Hormel. And Kellogg's has a better PE and price to sales ratio. Hormel is better in price to book and current ratio. They're above one at 2.1. Kellogg's has a much better ROE, double of what Hormel has. Hormel is only 4% debt, where Kellogg's is pretty leveraged at 74% debt. And they're both really close to market cap. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I'll be sure to answer. Thanks for watching.